You give light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give love. Hello, and welcome to Transformational Ministries International Podcast. I am Lori. And I'm Jackie. And we are here to bring you a transforming word, a word that will change your <laughs> life. I want to tell you something. As a believer, transformation is something that happens all the time. We are ever, ever changing mm. The, as we continue to walk with the Lord, we are continuing to change. It's not a one-time change. We're always changing, which is why Jackie will be talking to us about um, we're not gods. You know, gods are not ever changing. So we are not gods. We're not little gods. We are followers of Yeshua HaMashiach. We are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we are. We are people, human beings. But as we follow the Lord, he is constantly transforming and changing us. What's changing about us? Behavior. Thoughts. That's, that's what's changing about us. So as we get into this word today, what we're going to hear is to put, what we're going to be learning is to put on, take off the old man and put on the new man, understanding that we are not gods, and also knowing that we should not be weary in well-doing. What does that mean? You're doing good by sowing to your spirit. You don't want to stop that, because that's where the transformation comes in at. You sow to the spirit of the spirit, you reap eternal life. Amen, yeah. So, all right. Well, again, welcome. I'm going to turn this over to uh, Jackie. You want to get us started on this message well, today? Well, uh, yeah. I'm just sitting here, and I, I'm just, my heart is on the heavy side, and, you know, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm sure the Lord is going to say something to be a blessing. And um, this Christian journey is, is not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. Um because our flesh is constantly being fed and constantly being um, inundated with stuff that's happening in the world. 
and I was just sitting as you, before we went on, I, I thought about the Amish Mennonites and, and um, how they, you know, some of them don't mingle with the things of the world and they, they live their life. Some of them have farming, regular farming equipment, some still uh, with horse and buggy, some still use, you know, electricity, but they, they protect their children from this world. And this world is being uh, controlled by the God of this world, the prince and the power of the air that is now working and have been working in the children of disobedience because his objective is to make people disobedient to God. Mm -hmm. As in Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God. And that was the first sin, disobedient. Not necessarily eating of the tree. That opened their eyes, but the thing was disobedient. And I was just thinking, you know, in the first century when, when the apostles was preaching, uh, uh, and because Jesus dealt with demonic spirits. That had not happened prior to him coming. He, basically saying, hey, there's a new, there's a, there's, there's somebody new here now mm -hmm. with power mm -hmm. to cast out demons, mm -hmm. to let, let the, the, the demons and demonic forces know that you have no power now. Uh, I've come, God in the flesh, and I'm going to, and he expelled demons, demons. And they even said, have you come here to torment us before our time? And we know who you are. Right. And they knew that. And the apostles still did that. And they, they didn't have all this stuff that we have. Even in the 50s, you, didn't, you, know, you went to bed at a certain time. Uh, television went off at about 12 o'clock. And they started off with scriptures and ministry and, and sermons that was uh, been on the Sunday. And Sunday. So everything was different. Wow. I, there was, there was, there, yeah. I was born in the 60s, so I didn't see the scripture part and mm -hmm. all of that, but I definitely remember that TV going off because it had this sound like, Doo! yeah, and that would let you know it's over. Isn't that something? And you see, it, 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 this, this wasn't, even though sin and stuff was going on and evil, but it was it wasn't wide open like it is today. Right. It, it it you know you still had to deal with whatever you dealt with, but compared to the, what's going on and the, what the children is doing now mm -hmm. and what's happening now and the knowledge the Bible said knowledge would increase. Men will run two and four, and all these things happening. Uh, how the enemy have when they come up with uh, cable TV and uh, twenty four hour news and. 24-hour TV, all these things catering to you. Now, uh, in, the, in, the, in the 80s, you didn't have the cell phones. All of a sudden, you had the cell phones, and then you, the computers come in, the Internet comes in, and all the stuff that, that's embarking your mind and filling your mind and filling your thoughts with all this stuff. That's why the sermon is so important, the message is so important, is that take off the old man. How can you check off the old man when you're constantly feeding the old man oh, wow. with what's happening in the world? Wow. Okay. It's, it's, it's like pouring water through a, 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 strain, a strainer. You just keep pouring. You pour it, it's going to keep falling out. Right. So if you keep trying to renew your mind and, and taking off the old man, but you're still feeding it, you're fighting. What You see, there's... That don't make no sense. Wow. We had to we had to make a stand and, and and guard our minds, guard our ears, guard our thoughts. And and let me tell you something. If you're not in the word of God and studying the Bible, you're gonna be sifted as wheat in this world. Wow. If you're depending on a preacher to preach to you his ideas and his interpretation of the scripture, and you're not searching the scripture and studying it to show yourself approval from the God. You're gonna be, you're gonna have trouble. You you're not gonna be able to put your flesh on the subjection. You, you're not gonna be able to to uh, put the old man away. Mm. Wow! Because when you have That's really when you have preachers telling you that 
you're a little God, so you can think it and you can speak it and you can you have power because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So you can say to these mountains, say to this mountain, and you can pray, you can do this and you can do that. So you don't need God. You get the, your mind said, well, I, well, God, I, ain't gonna, I don't need to bother you with this matter because I can handle this. But you, you can't handle nothing because there is a supernatural force that's working against us. But God is super, supernatural. But there are supernatural powers and forces mm -hmm. working, uh, working us, working against us. Mm -hmm. And not only that, our flesh is constantly uh, being fed. And like the uh, Indian on the, on the reservation uh, was saying, he was fighting dogs, which was what not illegal then. And he would put he would put bets on this particular dog. And he knew what dog would win. And the question was, why, how do you know that? He said, well, the one I want to win, I feed him the most. And the one I want to lose, I don't feed him. Mm. So who do you want to, what do you want to win? Your mind, your flesh? If you feed your flesh, your flesh is going to win. Wow. You're not going to be able to put on the new man. You're not going to be able to take off the old man because you're constantly feeding it. So what would you say to a person who may not be grasping when you say you're feeding the old man. What kind of things are they doing that's making their flesh stronger than their spirit? You're constantly into what the world is offering you. You're looking at you got you you know you 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 looking at everything nudity. You know, the people didn't dress the way they dress now. You're looking at all kind of stuff, and and we know. People know what they're doing. We we know what we're doing. When you if, if you if you see something that that it, you like, I hate I saw that because it now that's just like a, a, a PTSD. You start seeing something, it gets in your mind. It, it don't leave your mind. Yeah, yeah. Like the guy said, you know, he, he was he was he was talking uh, that what I saw, and he, he named all these people that had that had died, got killed in a. In Iraq, and he was he he was suffering real bad for PTSD, and his wife, both of them were, were soldiers, and now they're playing the piano and helping others. He said, "I I, I just he said I can't get them out of my mind. Yeah, I can't get them out of my mind. They they're there. They're part of my life. I just I can't get them out. I got some issues going on, and I can't get them out. So you can get some stuff in your mind that you hate. You even saw this. You can't get out. It's not like some death and." Stuff on your internet, yeah, stuff yeah, on the yeah, TV, yeah, stuff yeah. on the, on uh, TikTok, all this stuff on the news. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, one of the things, and I'm going to go straight into, like, pornography. The soft porn or hardcore porn, it doesn't matter. Those images are so powerful and so strong that they, it's like they grip the mind. If you ever read anything mm -hmm. about people trying to come out from under that, um, addiction, how they would be at work or they would be mm. in church or whatever and those images would just bombard their mind and it was difficult for them. So in a many cases, it was like a drug addiction. What they would do to feed it was to watch more. Huh. And then the more you watch, the stronger the yeah. addiction God, and here's the thing with that. That thing is there the rest of your life. Yeah. Even if you come out from under it, you're going to have to guard your mind the rest of your life. You can't just be free willy-nilly on social media. You can't because soft porn is all over. Um, you know, One of the things I do, if you are a friend of mine and you put up an image of soft porn or hardcore, I don't, I don't care. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that image. Now, I don't know why you would put that up, but if you put up another image that's even close, close to soft porn, I'm going to block you as a friend. Mm -hmm. exactly. Because you're not, you're not doing nothing for me. That's mm -hmm. not helping me at all, right? And I don't want nothing in my head that's going to overcome me and take over. I'd rather have the word of God. <laughs> Overcome my mind. Take over my mind. The word of God. <laughs> and, 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 and just for a, 
point of contact, the scripture, we, we have several scriptures, but Galatians chapter 3, and 1, and 1 through 17 is where we'll probably be going. But as we as we looked at, uh, um, as we was talking, and, and, you, and, you, and you talk about, you know, what we have to do as far as presenting our bodies, it says here in the Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, Paul said, I, be, I beseech you, I, you know, I exhort you, brethren, by the mercies of God, the graces of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Your, 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 what, your, your bodies, what do your body, what do your body want? Your body, we not this body here. You got a mind, yeah. That so your body, your body ain't want nothing. It's your mind. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so he's talking about presenting your bodies a a, a living sacrifice, holy. The standards is still holiness, 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 acceptable. So you. Uh, what we're doing acceptable, acceptable mm. to God, which is our reasonable service. Right. Why? Because we're born again. We belong. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Him. That's our reasonable service to serve God, holy, acceptable to God. That's our reasonable service. And then it says, and there's a there's conjunction there, there's a conjunction here. Don't be conformed yeah. to the world. But the world, everything that you see around you outside the things of God, if it if it doesn't glorify God, it's it's not good. He said, "All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, yeah. is not of God. It is of the world, and the world, with its compassion, with its with its desire, lust, is passing away." Okay, say, and do not be conformed. To this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah, yeah. See, if your mind, it, it got to be renewed. Yeah, that's where your transformation comes from. That's the transformation. The renewal of the mind through yeah. the Word of God. That's where the transformation. And if it was a one-time thing, why would we be encouraged to continue in the Word? Yes. To stay in the word. So that automatically kills that little God thing. Uh, I mean, that, common sense will tell you. To me, I would say common sense will tell you that we're not little gods because we don't inherently possess power. Anything is inside of us is power. It's the Holy Ghost. Ain't nothing good other than us. And I'm a oh, righteous the it's, word. Filled, yeah. it's, it's filled the rags. Yeah. There's nothing good in us but the Lord. That's it. The Spirit of God. And we we can't control him. Great is he that's in us. We can't. So we we we, 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 we got we look God. So now in our mind we want to control the Holy Spirit. No, we need to submit to the Holy Spirit. Let yes. him let him be our guide. Let him be our teacher. Let him be our standby, our advocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really something because you imagine somebody really believing that and grabbing a hold to that and trying to live that out in their life. To me. It says you really open the door for the enemy to come in and get into your mind. Absolutely. Get into your mind and start, you know, having you think you can get anything, you can have anything. Which, to me, uh, I, I believe that's what happens with greed. When, mm -hmm. when ministers start bringing in a little bit of money, the enemy gets in. You have to guard your mind even from greed I'll because the enemy gets in and he starts to transform and change the word of God and what it's saying and what it means to be pointing to what you can have and money and all of that. You know that's not God doing that. So if it's not God, who is it? And all this, you, you, you're going to start out. With a, you're, you're not going to start with no five, no five six hundred people. You're going to start out maybe in your home, home and you're going, you're, you're going, you're going to move up. Now, now some, some place now you go get your education, and some churches there, uh, we, oh, we want you over here. You got a, you got a doctorate degree in, in, in theology and stuff. So we want to, you, we, we're going to move you to this church, and they, they'll move the like United Methodist and other church. They'll move you to, to different places, and you just kind of take that church over. And 
But most ministers start out small. Yeah, yeah. And they start out righteous. I, I remember hearing uh, uh, T.D. Jakes before he got into uh, the, uh, the the the, the uh, Paul Crouch and and uh, uh, that 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 ministry there. Right, right. That he was up in West Virginia. Didn't hardly have no pampers and diapers for his baby and all this other. He talked about that early yeah. on. But what done happened? He done got into the limelight, then got a taste of the money, and got a taste of the prestigious, and he completed the change. Yeah, yeah. Because the the more you change, the more people you draw in. Yeah, isn't the that people, yeah, yeah. If you if you were preaching hard against living holy, well, there was no room for LGBTQ not being sexually active. Right, there right. was no room for that, and that that would go for people that were uh, straight. And being sexually active, there was no room for. There's no room for fornication. Yeah. Exactly, but when you start to focus on money, more people bring in more money, so you start to become inclusive, mm -hmm. and you start to what wink at sin. You you start to turn your head at sin as if you don't see it, you don't know it, you know. No. Yeah. That's because you're 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 off now, and you're trying to bring in more money, more revenue, and and, and, when you, and you and you and you and you all of a sudden, you you start experiencing a different lifestyle. You like, oh no, I'm not going back there. Uh uh, I'm not going. Uh, and some folks say, look here, if I go back, I backslide it. Yeah. So if I go back to poverty, I'm back. That's crazy, isn't it? Huh. You, you, if, I, if I go back to, uh, to, to poverty, if I go back, I, I'm vaccinated. Yeah, but why would you be going back to, what are you doing that, that would even cause you to go back to poverty? Yeah, yeah. You know, what, what are you doing? Are you not taking the principles of God and, and being a good steward over what you have? Then that, that would explain why you're going back. Are you spending all your money on stuff trying to keep up with the Joneses? Yeah. You know, you 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 not paying your taxes, not doing the stuff you know to do, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, you know, it gets snatched out from under you. You gotta see God about everything. Yeah, everything. Because money ain't no joke. Money mm -hmm. ain't no joke. When you get a taste, I never forget this. When I had a, a had started a small ministry, and the Lord said to me, He said, "When I when I fund, when I start, I will fund." Right, because I didn't understand why these folks was, I'm, Jack, I'm talking about they was giving up money. Mm -hmm. now, I couldn't understand why they was doing it because I didn't have no charismatic ministry. You, yeah, you weren't preaching about no money and all no, that stuff? No, 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 no. You know, but God said whatever he, whatever he starts, Thank he's God, fun, You know, but he also let me know everybody starts out the same. Every good ministry starts out the same. Now, if you are already a charlatan, you just you saw a way to get into ministry to make some money. You you are already yeah. you're not even yeah. saved. You you know, I, and that's a good good example. You just do what God called you to do. You don't have to talk about money. You don't have to talk about all this stuff. People will do what's in their heart. Right. God will, God looketh on the heart. God changes the hearts. Right. The people and people will do as God direct them to do in their heart. They don't have to have the understanding. They're like, man, you know, I, you know, you know, I want to be able to be a blessing to you. You don't. You're not asking for nothing. Yeah. You're not asking, it, it, but it, 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 you know, it, it's gonna take care of itself. Yeah. It's gonna take care of itself. Yeah. And, God yeah. will definitely move on people to be a blessing to you. And that, that, that will be a place of humility for you. But if you're greedy, you're going to be, look, the ones that give, you're going to start whipping the other ones and saying, you know, you done got this good word from me. You done got this good prophetic word from me. And you need to be sowing on this word. Yeah, no, you okay. need to be giving on this word. How you expect God to do something for you and you won't do nothing yeah. for him? What? Ooh. How you doing something for God? How can you say something like that? No, you just want somebody to fund your lifestyle. That's what that is. Yeah, I and I, I'm gonna read what I have here in my, okay. my notes. It's uh, it, it, in Galatians uh, three and uh, one through seventeen. It's about it's 
and 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 he was, in this particular Bible here. Wait, I'm sorry. Gal- uh, Colossians, Colossians or Galatians? Col- Colossians. Col- okay. Got I get that word mixed up at times. Okay. Uh, in chapter three, okay. it, it's, it, the first part of it is it talk about the position of believers, and then it goes to then to talk about putting off the old man. Put on the new man, and right, that right. those those are the <laughs> subtopics, if you, if you will, of that. Because from verse one through five, it's our position as a believer, mm-hmm. and from five to eleven, it talks about the old man, what things that the old man is about, and from twelve to seventeen, it's about how you put on the basically put on the old man. That's our responsibility. And it says here in my writings, my little notes I have here, we must view and evaluate everything from eternal, from eternity and heaven. Not on earth. It's not about earth. We have to look at things that's from a, from an eternity a point of view uh-huh. and a heavenly point of view. Not like what we can get with our eyes say, but here. But, but we want to make sure... It's eternal because everything that we're dealing with God is is to eternal. It's what we are going. We we have possessed eternal life. We have eternal life. That's greater than silver and gold. Right, right. Absolutely. If you if you have nothing else, no silver, no gold, you just have just a barrel enough to to live off. You have eternal life. Wow. Eternal life. And and you you talk about streets of gold, mm-hmm. gates of pearl. The glory and the and 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 uh, the glory of God, the majesty of God, for the, for, for eternity. Mm. Not mm. this a little life that we have. You may live to be 85, 80, 100, or whatever. But because you're not gonna live eternity on the earth in your that's flesh right, now. That's right. It's gonna have to be changed. That's right. And if you don't, in in order to be changed, you have to have Christ in you. The, the, he's a changer. He's a changer. That's the one in you, the Holy Spirit inside of you. That's the one that's going to resurrect you. That's the one that's going to change your mortal body. Mm. Nothing in this world can change you. It'll change your mind to follow the things of the world, but it will not change you the things of God. That's right. What's going to change the word of God is the Holy Spirit in you, revealing to you the word of God, and you'll grow in Christ. But that's just that's just the beginning. You're not going to grow fully until you, your body is redeemed. That's right. You, you're changed. In that moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the trump of God, when the dead in Christ arise, and we that are alive will be changed and caught up with the be with the Lord. Mm, mm. That's that's our reward. That's the glory. That's what Amen. Paul says. Hallelujah. That I'm that that the time of my departure is at hand, and I fought a good fight. I fought. I kept the faith, but now there's henceforth the later for me a crown of righteous for me, not only me, but uh, see that's what we have. In eternity. So because of that, let us not live the old life. Right, right. The old life is a dead life. That's the old uh, life that Adam and Eve had. We, we need a new life. We need to be new in Christ Jesus. And this thing is working out sa- our f- salvation with fear and trembling every day. It's not what you did yesterday. It's every day. Every day. And it's uh, so... Eternity, heaven, that's a, that's our perspective. Our goal is to pursue and, and, to, and to be centered in around Christ Jesus, including resisting sin, not giving into it, not a, get, not a, not justifying it. Uh, oh, I was born this way. Uh, I, I just can't help myself. Uh, I, the, the, uh, this came from, from my family. No, don't justify it. You know, don't justify that, you know, that, yes. No, no, I I, I, want to add something to that before you go. So, you know when you're doing something wrong. Absolutely. You know it. So, you know, I used to, on occasion, I would be pulled into believing, you know, having sympathy for um, uh, LGBTQ people sexually active because I felt like, you know, they didn't ask for this. They didn't they want this or whatever. And so they was just doing, living out what was in them. 
but you know when you're doing something wrong because it doesn't fit. That makes me go back to the little kid mm -hmm. song. One of these things doesn't belong here, you know. You know if you have a penis and a girl has a vagina, you know those two things go together. But if you add an anus, you know one of those things doesn't belong. No. Okay? So you know when you're doing something wrong. It's no different when we're sleeping with someone that we're not married to. They're not a husband. They're not our spouse or fiance or whatever. They're, they're, they're somebody that we, you know when you're doing something that's not right because it doesn't feel right. Not the way that God made us. God made Adam and Eve to be together. So did he not make all men to be with a woman? Absolutely. That's that's it. Because if it wasn't, you couldn't recroque. Appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, and society would just fade away. And and, and like and like you said, and when you say that, I, I thought about if it don't fit, if it don't fit, you got to quit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> all of us got to fit. All of us have gotten to a place where we think, well, God. Yeah, like with Michael Todd, he was like, well, God, you know, you created man and woman. Then you like, why you didn't create something in between and all of that? Now, I would not say that. And that, that basically, basically is, if I was there, I would ask God to, to, to do that. Yeah, no. It, God it's, is it's, God. It's, it's unbelievable. He's holy. He's a holy God. You should reverence him and fear him. You don't say stuff like that. God created creation and everything was good. That's what he's saying. It was all good. So you, the fact that he did not make this in between, that was because it was not good. You know, uh, atheists uh, have a better, better a better chance to be saved than a person over here that say they know God, mm -hmm. but they're living outside of the principles and the and the things and the laws of outside God. Outside the Word of God. Yeah. So if you you can you you justify it, because once you j justify are you living in the old man you know you, you you but but you're saying but you're saying I'm in the new man but you your life you say I'm I'm a, I'm a new I'm new but your lifestyle is old wow. you still wow. in you still in the things of it, so therefore you now don't feel no remorse you feel no conviction you feel no guilt so you and the, everybody else saying oh yeah that's how it is well, you can come to us. You can come to our ministry just the way you. So you never change. Yeah, yeah. You never change because there's no conviction. But if you, but if a person don't say, "I don't know God," now God is able to bring him, bring him to the knowledge of the truth. Right, right, right. right. But if you thinking that you're right, that's why you, if you don't examine yourself, you may be going in the wrong direction. Like you say, a course direction. Course correction. Course correction. If you think you're right and everything is going the way you, that you got it together, and you don't examine yourself in the Word and ask the Holy Spirit to examine you. Yeah, well, He does that. You know, it don't take a long time for God to convict you of something. If you lie, when do He convict you of that lie? He convicts you of it on the spot. On the spot. You, start, yeah. you know that you lie. You know, you know it. <laughs> but now you may not respond. And then he gets you later. That message that I uh, I was ministering on the good life with Dr. Lori, you know, I was like, man, this message is kind of like in your face. You a liar, you know. <laughs> and I felt like, man. But then I felt like if somebody is on here listening to this message and God is dealing with them hard to get them to change and come out of sin, that's the best thing that could happen to them. That's the best thing. That's the best thing. Yeah. Oh. Because w would you not hate it if God decided, I'm going to just leave you be. You're not going to change. You can't change without me anyway, but you insist on staying this way. I'm going to leave you be. Uh, uh, After that, uh, you cannot change. You can't change. You cannot change. Uh, uh, you uh, don't you, reprobate you, you, mind. Uh, my, and that is a mind void of judgment. 
You don't fear God. You don't you, you don't reverence God no more. You don't fear. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. You have no knowledge. Now you you just you ju you ju you ju everything is justified. Wow. You don't, you do not you, you but God is holy and there's a judgment. He he judged sin through Messiah. So if you don't have Messiah, are you 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 are you you gonna have to go, you that's what you're gonna have to go through and it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's eternal. It's not gonna be the time on the cross. It's gonna be eternal. That kind of pain and that kind of suffering, because the, that's judgment. He judged sin in Messiah. All that what he went through, it was a judging and sin was being judged. And if you don't have the Messiah Jesus Christ in your heart, then your judgment is going to be like that, but it's going to be eternal. It's, it's not going to ever, ever stop. Wow. That's sobering to me. That's that's scary to me. That brings up in me the fear of God. You don't play with God. You know, I know for some people it's like, God ain't like that. You're talking about don't play with God. You make God so scary. This is the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is the creator of man, human. Okay, this is the creator of every single thing that has life in it that exists today. All power belongs to him. <laughs> All power belongs to him. Even though people out here in the world doing what they want to do and they're killing and stealing and fornicating and doing everything they want to do, like they big and bad to do it, there is consequences. That's a con and yeah. those consequences, for some people, God is allowing you time to get it right. That's it. Get it right, because he's going to keep sending those messages. That's, that's, but after yeah. a while, that's going to be over. He said God is done. not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering is not, win not willing that any should oh, perish. Wow, I love that. I love that. But all that should come to the knowledge of the truth. So he's got, he's He's giving you time. You have time. Now is time. Yeah. That, that's, that's the grace of God, the goodness of God. You know, I just thought about something. Sin is sin. Maybe you didn't kill nobody. Maybe you didn't conspire to rob or kill or, you know, maybe you didn't do anything like that. Maybe you just was fornicating and lying and stuff like that. But in God's eyes, all those things are the same. <coughs> yeah, 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 exactly. All those it's, things it's, are it's, the same. Sin is sin yeah. to him. Yeah. So if you are a murderer... And you had murdered a lot of people, right? And you had conspired. It doesn't mean you cannot be saved. Same grace, yeah. 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 It don't take no more grace to save a, a, a serial killer than a liar. Same grace. Wow. Man. God, God know. give you grace and mercy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you, you people say, I hope you don't get. I hope you don't get saved, or you can get suffer. Well, no, no, everybody, every, no. God, God, uh, Apostle Paul. What he, what he was doing, he was he was a terrorist. Yeah. A Saul of Tarshish. What he did, putting people in jail, dragging <sighs> women and men, and murdering that they uh, consent to Stephen being killed, the first mortal, and others. And he testified that every, every he testified that what he was used to be, but when he met Jesus, uh. and, and he said, "You're gonna suffer. You're gonna suffer great things because all the stuff that you've done." It's still there. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna suffer, and so Paul realized, I may, I may suffer, but I, my focus is eternity. Mm, and this yeah. is just on, like like the psalmist say, "We be man do it for a, uh, uh, for a night, but joy is gonna come." Amen. So, Hallelujah. You, you, know, you may you may be, you may go on through your trials and tribulations, but just don't stay in sin. Hallelujah. Because Hallelujah. because grace abounds. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There, there, there gonna be some joy. There gonna be some laughter, and glory. Yeah. And there's going to be some praise and worshiping. Wow. Wow. I mean, some people, they just, no matter what, they just refuse to accept God's way. And, you know, they're going to, that's going to be on them. <laughs> I'm telling but you. But for those that will listen, that will hear God's word, that will, like you said, you know, they're, the same grace for a liar is the same grace for uh, a multi-killer, what did you say? Uh, uh, serial killer. killer. Yeah. And see, this Bible is for everybody. Yeah. It's not only for Christians. It's for everybody. It's instructions in righteousness. Yeah. So that you can 
see yourself. You know, so if 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 you're going, if you you know, God going God can deal with you uh, at any time. Anybody at any time touch your heart. But when you feel if you're doing something and all of a sudden you feel convicted, you may not even hear. You not even you might not even hear a word. Yeah. But if you start, if you're doing something, you like uh. Uh-uh. I don't feel it. I don't want to do this. That's God. Mm, hallelujah. That's that's God. That's God is talking to your heart. See, there's a part of us. It, it's it's like a zigzag, a zigzag puzzle. It it, if it it only a certain thing gonna fit, and that's God can fit that spot. Right, right, right. You're trying to make other. You're trying to make stuff fit it. Money. It can't. Yeah, it can't. It, it, it can't fit it. Yeah. It's not, that's not going to satisfy you. That's not going to be, you're not going to be content with that. It's only God. It's God. That's, that's what you're looking for. That's what you're searching for. It's God that's going to be able to fit that. Are you going to be reading? Yes, I'm saying uh, that. Yeah, because when you said <laughs> that immediately, and went to the I first started looking at uh, Galatians, uh, Colossians 3, 5 through 6. But if you're going to read yeah. that, go ahead. <laughs> Because, oh my well, anyway, it's because it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, if then you, if then when you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting on the right hand of God. That's, that's, that's our position. Our position is in heavenly places. <coughs> and, and it says that, that, uh, over here, uh, in Ephesians chapter one, it says, uh, in verse 19, in 19, verse 1 and 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us worth who believe, according to the workings of his mighty power, which he worked or wrought or demonstrated in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And these heavenly places is far above all the principality and power might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but that which is to come and have put all things under his feet Mm. and gave him to be the head of all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in things and then verse chapter 2 and verse 6 says and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so our position, focus. Our focus is in heaven, mm-hmm. not on the earth. That's our destiny, and that's what it says here. If you then being raised, uh, risen with the Messiah, seek those things which are above, which is which is seated at the right hand of God. Mm-hmm. What, what are we seeking for? We're seeking for stuff here, right. but seek those things which are above, where Christ sits. That that's that's what we that's so what, how. So what will we be seeking? Christ's power, Christ's authority, Christ's word, holiness and holiness, righteousness, righteousness, and his character. His character, yeah. The things that you know that we, we we what he was about, what he was about. Yeah, he dealt with with sinners, but they didn't stay sinners. He dealt with. He said, "Go and sin no more." Ooh, seeking to live a life where you're seated. In heavenly places with Christ, you can't do that on your own. No, you can't even get that awareness on your own. Wow, never thought about that before. So you see, you see the character of the Messiah. Yeah, and we see that in in Galatians uh, five and twenty one, twenty two. You know, the, the the fruit of the spirit, the, the those things that we had to put on, we have to look at that and and and, and live that. Right, not the things of those nine. Fruit of the works of the flesh. Right. Those things are of your of your body. That's what your body wants. So if you're living in those things in Galatians uh, five and seven, if you're living, if you're living, you're living in the flesh. You you you're not living in the spirit. Mm. You you're still stuck there. So so you can't practice those things that he talked about. Go ahead. You you read better than I do. Read. Uh, you got any more on that one? Where are you? Where did you stop? Uh, uh, one, just verse one. Verse one. Well, what got my attention is verse five. When everything that you were talking about is right here in the word, he said, "For this reason, 
put to death the parts of your earthly nature. What did he call out first? Sexual immorality. Yeah, sexual so immorality. Anything sexual. You don't get the green light from God unless you are married. That's right? it. And you cannot uh, divorce your wife, divorce your husband to marry another. You, you can't do that. Okay? So, impurity. Again, this is dealing with sexual impurity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Inordinate affection. What is that dealing with? Affection, sexual affections that are not ordinary. That passion and stuff, yeah. Yes. Okay? Evil desires. That means your desires are not godly. Yeah. Whatever the desire is, yeah, yeah. it's evil, which means it's contrary to the word of God. Covetousness. Now you're getting into your money now. Your greed, yeah. Your greed. You're getting into your money. So he's dealing with sexual immorality, just being wicked and evil, and now he's talking about money. And then he says, this greed thing is idolatry. You made money your God. Your God. And and we know from the Old Testament that put that sent the Israelites into into uh, uh, bondage mm -hmm. into slavery. They lost their country. They lost their nation because of idolatry. Mm. That was that was that. That's one uh, that the first, one of the first commandments. You can't have nothing else before God. No, you can't have no other, no nobody, nothing before God. No graven image, nothing. It must be God. So here, covenant is. He said he, he brings out covenants, which is idolatry. Yeah, yeah, and here. In verse 6, it says, because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. So if this is how you're living and this is what you're practicing, the wrath of God is upon you. Now that right there. That, that's it. That's the judgment of God. Yeah. We talked about the judgment of God. The judgment was on Christ, but this is the judgment of God. And, and if you're sons of the, if you're disobedient, that means you are practicing these things. The sons of disobedience. So we, we, we see up here, you have not set your mind on verse 2. You have not set your mind on things above, yeah. but you have set your mind on things of the earth, yeah. which is money. What's on the earth? All these things that, that you just covered. Yeah? Set, you set your mind on those things. You say, but you're dead. Mm. Uh, you, you're dead. And, and your life is hid in Christ. Our lives is his in Christ. Yeah. So, so we're dead to the things of the world. That's what. Yeah. Huh. Then when Christ, who is our life, appear, then we will appear with him in glory. Not the wrath of God. So what do you have to lose? I mean, look at how much you're you going to lose by you practicing these passion in verse 5. Therefore, putting, you got to put the, put the death. Yeah. You know, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself of me. <laughs> he considered himself dead co compared to, you know, otherwise I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't do what I used to do. Right. What I was doing before, I can't do that no more. I got the, I got, the, I, because he said that there's a wretched man, like there's a, you know, when I want to do good, he was there. But the good that I would, I don't do. But so I find that I find there's another another person working in me. There's another spirit, and there's something going on. Yeah, yeah. And 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 he talked about being a wretched. But see, in Christ Jesus, in Christ, you can overcome this wretchedness. Right, right. But you can't give in to it. Well, you know, I just had this thought. When people say, uh, don't judge me as God is still working on me. and this, You know, here's the thing. If God is working on you, but you refuse to change, you can't just excuse behavior saying God is working on me. How long does it take God to work on you? You just obey whatever he tells you to do. You just, you <laughs> it's just like, obey. It's like you don't have no power to get it done right away. Is working on me. Is uh, I'm I'm I, I, I'm just gonna be a little slow with it because you enjoying what you're doing yeah. more than the, the deliverance God can give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't 
that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. If God tells you to do a certain thing, then you have to do that. But if you refuse to do that, you are choosing to walk in. He said, put to death the parts of your earthly nature. You're, re you're, you're choosing to walk in your earthly nature. And you brought up Galatians 5, 19 through 21, I believe it is. And you brought that up about the, the works of the flesh. That means you're choosing to walk yeah, in read, the works read, of read the, the flesh. Yeah, read over those, those verses. Read the back, you know, Galatians. And, yeah, and, and, and if you still, and if you still, if we're still living in that, yeah. that means we have not put off the old man. Wow. Okay. So uh, I'm going over to five. Galatians yes, five. five, and I'm going to be reading from 19. It says, "Now the works of the flesh are revealed, which are these: adultery, sexual immorality, impurity, and lewdness." All of that deals with any kind of sexual behavior mm -hmm. that is not that is con that is not condoned by the Bible. Mm -hmm. The only sexual behavior that's okay is between a husband and his wife. That's it. Male and female. Male and female. That you can't make yourself no male now. I'm a female. You, you, what, what God, you, what, what, what God created. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so those few things just covered everything concerning um, any kind of sexual behavior. And then it goes from that to idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, rage, selfishness, dissension, heresy. Do you have a different words for those? It's a, this heresy, I'm a little God. Uh, you know, say, saying something outside of what God is really about. Right, right. Well, idolatry deals with you making something else your God. Exactly, idolatry, okay. idolatry. Right. And we know that was covering this here. Right. Uh, you know, cause and, you're making silver and gold your, 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 your God. Right. And sorcery, sorcery deals with you practicing stuff that's contrary. You know, to witchcraft the and divination and mm -hmm. uh, talking to the dead and uh, talking to spirits. Uh, ancestry worshiping and ancestry, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And hatred, Jesus said, if you hate, how can you hate your brother but who you see, but you say you love, I may be having it backwards. You, you, love you God. say you love God who you can't see. He's basically saying, no. Yeah. No. You cannot hate I your mean, brother. That, that, see, that, that's, you, 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 you may Dislike and hate, you, when you hate, yeah. I mean, that's when you can go and shoot up and kill people. That's when you don't care about no other person, a race, a, ra a race of people, or their sexual, whatever their sexuality, whatever, they, they, whatever you just hate them. Right. That's right. a that's a strong word, isn't it? It, it is. It's, yeah. It is, and well, it lets you know you're devoid of God. Absolutely. There is no God in you. Because God is love. Yeah. We, we have the love. All right, all right, James. Now you got these. You got strife, jealousy, rage. Okay, those three things is this behavior. Well, hatred goes along with that. But the strife, the jealousy, you know, when the scripture talks about jealousy, God will let you know that a man will kill you. You sleep with his wife. He, jealousy will cause him mm -hmm. to kill mm -hmm. you, you know, over that. So jealousy brings about those kind of things. Rage, Rage and strife and all of that. So you don't get a pass. Mm -mm. Somebody made you mad. You don't get a pass for that. It's, that's not okay to operate in those things. And then selfish, of course, we know that nothing about God is selfish. God is love. Yeah, you other words, yeah. That. Selfish is like you don't care about nobody else. It's about you. It's all you. Yeah. Everybody else, you kick, you, you kick everybody else under, under the belt, belt bus, but it's you. Mm. And you have dissension. These are your factions. This is all of that uh, different beliefs and all that stuff. That, and then you got heresy, which is the same thing. You're preaching stuff or teaching stuff that's contrary to the word of God. And then you have envy, murder, drunkenness. <coughs> 
and carousing. Okay? All of these things point to the flesh of human beings without God. Without God. That's it. And that's why it warns us, seek those things. Don't seek those things that we just talked about on the world, yeah. but seek things above where, where Christ sit, is sitting. That's not, those things are not there. Right. Right. Well, if you see any of this operating in your life, you know, <coughs> you know that you are seeing works of the flesh yeah. and anything related to that, anything that's like that. Now, he didn't just leave it right there. He went on to show you the opposite of that, which would be the fruit of the Spirit, which yeah. is letting you know this is when you have God, this is what it looks like. Okay? Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness. Now, gentleness, go back to all of the stuff, rage and jealousy and strife and selfishness and hatred. Well, gentleness <laughs> deals with all of that. Goodness, faith, meekness. Meekness is your humility. Mm. Okay? And self-control. Against such there is no law. There's no law. There's no limit. There's no limit. So now you know these are the things that you should be seeing operating in your life. If you're not seeing these, then you're seeing the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have to deal with. When you see yourself hating and rage and, you know, some of these, um, I don't want to become political in our discussion, but some of these um, uh, believers that are into political stuff, like what we saw in, not 9-11, but 6-11. Uh, 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 January 6th. January 6th. Yeah, I was off. <laughs> I was off big time. 1-11. But anyway, anyway, these people that profess to be Christians, but they have this hatred for like, uh, Democrats yeah, 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 yeah. or hatred for Republicans. And it's like, as Christians, that ain't even something we even need to be involved in at all. But sitting back, looking at it, it's like, do they not know that this behavior is none of God? And they think that when when you when you're saying that, it's like you want to be God, and you want to hand bring forth judgment yeah. on oh, a wow. people instead of t praying and giving it over to God. Vengeance is here, God says. God said, vengeance is mine. Yeah. But you think, oh, they're killing the babies and they're doing this. And so now you want to kill them and you want to do this to them because yeah. you, uh, you're you God now. You want to do, you want to judge them right. or judge people. We can't judge people like that. Yeah. We have to pray for them. We don't, we, we don't. That's, that's, right. our, that's you, our part I'm not, in it. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what the scripture says. If you feel judged, the scripture may be judging you, not me. Right, right. Well, I remember my first time, and I've told this testimony before, um, I had a young person that I was working with, and clearly he was showing um, homosexual uh, behavior in some of the things that he did and how he acted. And it was difficult, me being a born-again believer, and I knew that the act of homosexuality was wrong, you know, and so I knew that he hadn't got to a place where he had started engaging in sexual behavior and none of that. But he was letting it be known that he was gay. Now, he didn't do that when we were in at the center because his parents would have found out. But mm. when we went out of town, oh, he was full on. But it, it disturbed me because I didn't know what to do. I, this kid was, uh, well, I don't want to give away too much information. But anyway, I didn't know what to do. And so I prayed. And I said, God, what, what am I supposed to do? This kid is in my life, and I'm working directly with this child. What do I do? And the Lord spoke to me, Jackie, and he said, love him. Well, mm -hmm. that's contrary to everything else about homosexuals and LGBTQ. You don't love them. But God does. Amen, yeah. God does love yeah, them. He, he, God, for God so loved the world. 
I mean, everybody so in the world, everybody. That means you love them. You just love them. And that helps to give them an opportunity regardless of what they do. The fact that you love them and they saw God loving on them in spite of, that gives them an opportunity to get to a place where they will repent. Maybe when they get sexually involved and that lifestyle becomes difficult and hard and, you know, health-wise and all of that, they remember that love. And that gives them an opportunity to repent and ask God to forgive them for what they was doing. It's no different than a man having sex with a woman, and he's not married to them. He's just having a lot of sex with different women. Well, it's no different in this day and time, 2023, women are doing that now. Mm -hmm. They are having sex with a lot of different men, and no worries. I don't get it, because that's not how women are made, but that's what women are doing now. Mm. But no different than homosexuals, they still need to repent. Amen. Yeah. And they still need and, to ask and, God and to trust God that God to keep them. Uh, it's, I mean, because you know you that like Moses, he would have suffered the affliction of the children of Israel and enjoy a sin for a season. Yeah. Because it's going to only be for a season. That's the sexual drive and whatever. It's going to be for a season that you can you committed yourself into it. Those past it's going to only be a, it's going to be a, a time. It's, it's going to be over with. Wow. Just for a season. Yeah. And in that time, God will be done reached out to them, and that maybe when it gets hard, they'll be able to yeah. turn to Him yeah. and ask for forgiveness. And uh, so. and, and that's what you were just reading there. Those are the things that we have to put off, the desires and the. And, and things of the of the flesh, and consider ourselves dead to those things. I, I, it, 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 it's, it, it's a, I'll tell you something. If you out there and you think that no one know your challenge, we all challenge. Yes, yes. We all have challenges. Nobody got it right, like you said before. We all gonna be challenged with our lives. Yes. Is that when the Spirit of God let us know that that's not right? Yeah. You have to make adjustments. You 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 got to you got to make an adjustment. You got to pray and ask God. God, I need your help. Yeah. And then when, when uh, certain things you you got to you got to turn away from them. <coughs> it may be difficult for a while. It's like it's like you 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 a, a, a addict or alcoholic. You can't keep drinking and and saying you delivered. Or you uh, on drugs, uh, you know, centaur <coughs> or a crack or meth and 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 you still around, around people that's doing that, you're gonna be tempted more and more. Right. <coughs> well, I, I tell you what, um, you know, the title that you gave for this was to put off the old man and put on the new man, and. title says this is what you do. Because mm -hmm. people say, oh, if God wanted me to change, then he would have changed me. If God wanted me to do this, then he would have did it. And that's a good escape clause. That's a good escape clause. But if God tells you to put off the old man, the body of death, mm. and put on the renewed man, the new man in Christ, you have to do that. <laughs> yeah. And if he said you can, then you can. That's right. You, you're like, I, I can't. Yeah, yes, you can. With the help of the Lord, yes, you can. Yeah. You have to make a determination. Yes, you can. And and down here in verse 1 it says, therefore, as the elect of God, you are elect, elect of God, holy and beloved. Then he said, put on yeah, put on what? Tender mercies. Put on kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering. We just read that uh, of the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. He said, put it now. Paul said, put them on. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a, a complaint against any, even as Christ forgave us, we also must forgive. Right. See that that's that's putting on the new man, forgiving. 
I may be tough for some people that have done you wrong and did some evil things to you, but you have to forgive them. Right. And, and one other thing that helps you is when you surround yourself with like-minded people. Because if you're with people that are contrary to what you're learning in the Lord, and they're still, they still have the ability to speak in your life and say stuff like, well, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't let nobody oh, get yeah, over oh, me. Man. Right? If you're hearing that, you're hearing what's contrary to the word. They're speaking to your flesh. If your flesh is already weak, right, then you may be more inclined to want to go with what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But if you are around believers that will say, well, you know what the word says, you might not want to hear that, but they're giving you life. They're giving you life, and that's what you want. You want life. God, I, I think sometimes, Jack, that people <coughs> think that the Christian life is boring, that you don't have a lot of fun, and that you don't, you know, you don't do, well, it's actually the contrary. You're not a slave to anything in this world, right? You have eternal life in you now. You possess it now. You have a relationship with God where he does supernatural things in your life. He can open up the the um, the spiritual realm at any time and show you things and reveal things to you. I mean, it's a really exciting life. And, 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 that, and when you start saying that, it's a exciting life to the point that you try to find the good. You see the good, and you try to find the good in everybody. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and 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 you know things happen in the house and you call with your call, your life, all this stuff. Instead of worrying about it and getting stressed out, you like, you know, God just say this, that, just trust me with it. Yeah. And and it, is, it becomes a challenge that you, you just trust. And eventually, as you as you trust God, like you know, what can I? I can't do anything about that. Right. Well, I can't do anything about it, so I'm not gonna you know worry about it. But the others, you know, you you don't have no outlet. You you have no one to cast your cares and your burdens on. So you 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 hold them in yourself. You, yeah. And, and yeah. next thing you, you you got all kind of other stuff because when you stress come in, you put all that stuff inside of it. It affect you. Uh, drinking you, you, to deal with it. Yeah. Smoking weed to deal with it. Yeah. Know. You got to release some stress. You got to have some sex to deal with it, you know. And so, and none of that is good for you. None of that. Or you wake up with a hangover. You're sick. You're sick. Yeah. You go to the toilet hauling George. <laughs> that did stuff that you didn't realize you did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, it's time for us to get up out of here, Jackie. Will you please? Pray for us, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and those who may hear this message who are drawn to the Lord as a result of this message. Will you please pray for all of us? Father, I thank you. I pray that you you let let the listeners know that there there is hope. Uh, that, that that I hope is in you, Lord. Uh, some have said there is no hope. I have no hope, but there is still hope, Lord. And like, uh, like uh, someone said, keep hope alive and. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our position as believers, that our position in Christ is to be uh, focused on the things above and not on things on this earth, Lord. We thank you that we, where you sit at the right hand of, of the Father. So we thank you that we're in those heavenly places with you, Lord, within our spirit realm. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for, we. It, there's a time when we must put off the old man. We have to just put it off, Lord, and the things that, uh, that pertain to this life, Lord. And God, help us, oh God, to put on the new man, which is renewed after the Messiah, to be like Jesus. And we ask you to touch the hearers and listeners of the word of God today, that when they, when this message go out, when they do listen to it, Lord, we pray, oh God, that they would, uh, those who don't know you in the parts of their sin, and we all, we all was like that. We I didn't know y'all until I, that time came, and the Lord didn't know you. Uh, not the way we know you now, Lord, and and we have we have to grow in grace and grow in Christ, Lord. We we are like babes, and we grow up in Christ, Lord. We become more like you, Lord, and we thank you. We want to follow you, and and like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, Lord, yes, yes. and not to follow people and going in the wrong direction, following ministers and preachers that's going in the wrong direction. But God, follow righteousness, Lord, because those things that we do in this life, we're gonna have to give account. Oh, at, the, at the end of our lives, Lord. And we want to make sure we go, you, you, when that time comes, you want 
Uh, you want to be hear that word. Well done, that good and faithful servant. You've been faithful a few things. Now you're making your rules over many. So, Lord, we thank you. We know that this is just a short period of time. Our life is just a vapor. It appear and disappear. Even though we may live to be uh, 80 or 90 or 100, God, it's, it's, it's just like a day. A day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. Because, God, but I thank you that you're not slack concerning your promise. But, God, you're long-suffering, that not willing to end it your parents. But, God, I pray that those who don't know you in the partners of their sin will hear a word today. And they'll be convicted within their spirit. And they'll say, Lord, I want to be saved, Lord. And, and ask you to invite you into their lives, Lord. And, and trust in you. And begin to read the word of God. Even though they might not understand. But, Lord, the Holy Spirit will, is our teacher. Yeah. He will guide them into the all truth, Lord. And we want to thank you. And if they do... Uh, decide to go to the church. They have to go to a church that's preaching sound doctrine, not the itch and ear gospel, not to hear about health and wealth and all the other stuff that they are talking about, but just hear unadulterated gospel. The Lord, the death, the burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to thank you, praise God. We ask you to bless our listeners today. I pray uh, that uh, Arthur ask you to touch him today. Praise God. Bless him. And I'm sure he's listening. I send it out to him. And I know he's probably listening. I pray that you bless him, Lord. Bless his family. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. We thank you for his soul salvation. We thank you for blessing him, Lord, his health. And he'll be uh, uh, 78 years old uh, in, in a couple more days, uh, uh, the 8th of uh, December. And we want to th thank you for him, Lord, and his family. And all the ones that's listening and are going to listen on demand. We ask you to bless. And, that, and I pray that they'll have a great day. And not only that, the rest of the days, every day they'll work out their salvation with fear and trembling. Yes, yes. Every day they'll dedicate their life to Christ and they'll be focused on Christ. There not will be a day, not be an hour that they don't think about the Lord. Hallelujah. So we ask you to bless them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. So we're going to get ready to get up out of here. Thank you for bringing this word today. Um, definitely a word that we need. Um, so uh, I, I, I personally, I've already planned to go back and listen to this mm -hmm. word again because I heard the Lord speaking through this word. So we appreciate that. So we're going to get ready to get up out of here. Just a little bit more of this music. And <laughs> Every heart that is broken 